Welcome to Movies That Matter, the podcast about recent films going beyond basic film criticism to boldly explore a social issue affecting people's lives. I'm Nicole Finari, and with me today is... Adam Perry. All right, Adam, what are we overanalyzing this week? The Hunt. So, 12 strangers wake up in a clearing. They don't know where they are or how they got there. They don't know they're be- they've been chosen for a very specific purpose, the hunt. The movie sort of has a lot of, uh, it's like, cameos, I guess. Uh, yeah. Stars Betty Gilpin, Hilary Swank, Ike Barinholtz makes an appearance, Emma Roberts makes an appearance. Um, Sturgill Simpson is yeah, in it. He's like, popular. Yeah. Uh, Glenn Howerton. Glenn Howerton's in it, for those of you. Yeah, so there's there's like a motley cast of, <laughs> what would we call this, B-list celebrities? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are people you know, but... I don't like they're, you know, they're definitely working like us. <laughs> they're not yeah. living large. And no, and they're, and they're, I, I just like, they, I think they just come in for like name recognition so that yeah. you think that they might live. Yeah. Cause you recognize them, but yeah. Everyone so, in it owed Lynn Loth a favor. It's like, all right, we're good now. So what, what did you think of the hunt? I mean,. <laughs> It's not good, and it's also not really, like, I don't think it's worth any of the hoopla that's been made no. about it either. Uh, it was fine. It was, you know, it's a bad movie that was entertaining to me. You know, it's not, it's, it, it, it existed, and then it was over. <laughs> yes. I don't, know. I don't think it's worth any any more analysis than that, except that we're going to do Yeah, that. <laughs> we have a whole podcast to analyze it. Um, so disclaimer, obviously we're in the middle of the coronavirus social distancing, so the movie theaters were closed, we both streamed this, um, which sort of affects how much, it it just changes how I watch the movie, which is unfortunate. Did you pause it at all? I did not, um... You I know. I was like, I could. Long, I was sort of like, oh, I could have watched it again and given a better review, and I just didn't feel like it. There's, yeah, there's no real reason to watch this movie again. Yeah, but um, despite that fact, you know, I think we can still give a decent critique of the movie. Um, I do want to say that, like, just sort of separating the two factions, and we'll go into them each, like separating the sort of horror from the satire. It was an entertaining horror movie it was a terrible satire yeah it it was like cringing yeah it was was just embarrassing it it was bad and like i feel like with satire it's all or nothing like you either there's no such thing as like mediocre satire you either nail it and it's hilarious yeah or yeah if you miss the mark you just that's it like it kind of doesn't have redeeming value yeah yeah it was it's just listening to I mean, I don't, I don't really know the um, the politics of the screenwriters, but the the writing for the uh, deplorables was I, I think it was like supposed to be funny, but it was just it was just embarrassing. Yeah, I think they were trying to do like a Citizen Ruth type paint every it's side as it's like extreme. You know what I mean? Like, like everybody is stupid. everybody is terrible yeah. thing. They were trying not to pick sides. Um, I feel like you can do that though, and it was just, I think it, the problem I had with it was that they had, whenever it was like a bigger actor, like Hillary Swank, I thought, like, I mean, she didn't really do, like, she didn't really have a lot to work with, in my opinion, that was any good, but it just it came off as so unbelievable whenever it was like a, like the bigger name, the actor, I guess, I don't know, and it just, it just didn't work for me. I mean, I... Every I, just the whole thing, like the satire, wasn't very on point. It, no. it wasn't particularly biting. Like it just didn't work. So I would say it it failed on that front. I, I you know as a, like a sort of horror movie, it was it was entertaining. Yeah, but some good some good kills. I mean, well paced. Yeah, didn't linger on anything. Didn't waste any time. I mean, I don't think it broke eighty five minutes before the credits ran. Yeah, which is good. Like, don't you know? Don't yeah. don't don't pad a movie out because you feel like you've got to get a ninety minute runtime in there. No, 
Um, I liked Betty Gilpin. What she did was you great. Her? Yeah. She kind of kept me interested in the whole movie. Mostly because everyone else is dying anyway, but none of the other actors or characters are very compelling. And she was a good audience surrogate. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, but also with enough of her own backstory. And, you know, usually with those characters, there's nothing about them because it's supposed to be you. But yeah. with her, there was like enough going on too, where it's like, and even the way they introduce her kind of off on her own when everyone's waking up to get hunted, it's automatically kind of makes you wonder what's going on with this person. You know, she's just right off the bat, just, all right, I got to figure out what's going on here. And yeah. Everyone else has the canned, like, where are we? What's going on? Why are they giving us weapons if they want to yeah. hunt us? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's just like, all right, give me a break. Yeah, there's a lot of unnecessary expositional dialogue. Um, they also didn't, you know, there were a few quote unquote twists and some unresolved issues. Um, and they didn't linger too long on the twists, which were not very hard to see coming. So then it was good that it wasn't like, I, it really annoys me when like the twist is she was pregnant all along and she's like throwing up in the first scene and you're like, oh, she's pregnant. And then it takes another 40 minutes of the yeah. movie to reveal, oh, my God, she's pregnant. You know, and it's like, oh, I knew that. Like, please don't linger on this thing that I am supposed to, like, think is going to be a big yeah, reveal. I'm not a stooge. I've seen a movie before. before. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, they cough twice at the beginning of the movie. They're like, they're going to die of consumption. Like, I just. Yeah. And like, so I, I, I appreciated the fact that, like, in its tight pacing, it didn't linger on, like. Actually, he's really, like, one of the bad guys. Like, uh, thank you. Are you talking about the, the quote-unquote, like, the crisis actor? That part was hilarious. Yes. Like, well, in the I don't store think owners. I believe you, Don. I was yeah. like, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah, the store owners was like, all right, I see what's going on here. They did leave. So the sort of two open questions was Don. Yeah. So this is spoiler alert, but it's not really spoiler alert because we might have different opinions on this, whether or not Don was a plan and she tricked her into killing him anyway. I think that he was a plant because I guess if you, if you look, I'd have to watch it again, but there's this scene. He makes the mistake where he's the one who says, all right, there's 12 of us. Right? He's mm-hmm. the one who says that, but there aren't. There's 11. Right. So either that means that he was in on it from the beginning and knew the real number. Yeah, that's what that would have to yeah, be. Yeah, like. and his his face wasn't on the wall. Yeah, when his they show the, the wall, pictures. When they show the pictures of all the... So, okay. So we know he was in on it. And then the second question is, like, did they have the wrong... Was Betty Kil- Gilpin the wrong person or not? Like, did they get the wrong Crystal May? I would say yes. I I, I believe that she she was in like a, a you know like the the wrong man situation. I would say yes too because like when Hillary so there's a scene where Hillary Swank is like explaining why they pick these people um, and. Which is for really stupid reasons, <laughs> but <laughs> again, the satire doesn't work very well. But uh, she gives her whole like backstory, and I'm like, if you were going to give somebody's backstory, you wouldn't forget to mention that they were in the armed services. Yeah. So I was like, they do have the wrong person. Well, also because she she's re- I, I think it's the the um, the other guy is reading what this. Crystal supposedly wrote and he only gets about a paragraph into her screed or whatever before Hillary Swank is like, I don't want to hear anymore. She's in. And I think that's where like the error probably occurred. Mm -hmm. Cause if it had, maybe if she had listened more, it would have been like, Oh, it's, there are two of them. And one of them is, is not anything. And this other one is the one that I want. Yeah, I'm not sure. I do think that, like, by making her a not a mistaken identity, you really then have made an utterly pointless movie. Yeah, 
Like, like that's like then she. It, there's just no. There was no reason for her to be there in the first place. She's not getting one over on any. Like then it's like I was like that was a really stupid choice. <laughs> like why did you do it that way, plot wise? Yeah, it's it's like something out of a Steven Seagal movie where it's like, oh, you know, they come to his small town and he's, you know, the the, the a cook, and they mess with him, and it's her. Oh, well, he's an ex Navy SEAL, and we just didn't know it. I don't know, it, just, it, it didn't really gel with the rest of the movie. Yeah, I mean, and I guess like the point I think they were trying to make, if I had to go out on a limb, was that. It's us ordinary people, I'm probably not included in that, um, who are getting sort of caught in the crossfire between the, you know, the extremists on either side. Yeah. And like, it's for the regular folks, you know, the silent majority to like stand up and fight back. But I just thought it would have been a lot better if she were not a mistaken identity and they just like painted everybody with the same brush. And then. Yeah, but that's like kind of like you. I feel like touched on like the problem with movies like this is it just takes everybody on either side. I feel like would see that and get either more entrenched in their views. And then like the regular people that it's quote unquote for who are just sick of extremists on either side are just like, well, it was like not that great. And I kind of wasted my time and I'm going to tell people they don't need to waste their time. And since like everybody's apparently like me, no one's really going to watch this movie, you know? Yeah. And it, it, it just, I don't know. It's, 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 it was silly. And I mean, I, when it got canceled or whatever, you know, I didn't take any of that with a grain of salt. And then of course it comes out and it's like nothing. I want to step into the controversy stuff in a second, like kind of finishing up on the movie side. Um, And again, I mean, it's kind of hard to judge because I wasn't in the theater, but I do think like, at least for the screening I saw, the sound design was a bit unbearable. Like every piece of gore was accompanied by like a really squishy noise. Yeah. And, like it was just a little overbearing. It was a little like Eli Roth yeah. for my taste. And I, I, I don't know. Digital blood is starting to annoy me. That's been a thing for a while now. And it just, it doesn't look good. I didn't notice because I always have my eyes closed. Yeah. It, was, it was pretty bad. There's a couple of, you can tell when it's practical and when it's not. Yeah. It's like it, it uh, just. Well, you know my position on practical versus digital anyway. And yeah. that's not going to change. No, I'd be, with, and again, with, with stuff like this, it's so cheap anyway to yeah. do a horror or like a violence thing. It is, it, what, it, what it takes is talent. To make it look realistic, not necessarily money. And so right. they, they, people don't want to waste time either developing that skill or finding people that have it anymore is just harder. It takes more time, which is, I guess, equates to money. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like, they probably shot this over four days, right? <laughs> it does not look like it took a long time to make at all. Not a bit. Like, any of it. The shooting, the editing, maybe nope. assembling the movie. <laughs> the, like, I mean, no. I found... The score, curiously, like, retrograde. It was very old-fashioned, and I was like, I don't... What are we trying to say with... It? Like, I, 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 it, it did just feel like they, like, pulled a score from an old 80s action film and hope and nobody would notice. Way, they, yeah. Yeah. It's a way to keep costs down if they did do that. Yeah. But as you're saying that, I don't... Don't, I don't really remember attention. it. I mean, I was, I was paying attention to the movie, and I was, I was you know, more or less, I will give it credit, I was kind of like because the pacing is so quick you kind of can't help but be sucked into it but i don't remember the music at all yeah it was like a very okay it was like a very old-fashioned like it just it was not my it was not like this century even but you could play something right now that wasn't from the movie i'd be like oh yeah (laughs) is that what it was good fair enough Although speaking of the score, I I was like, see, this is why I you know I'm I'm an evil liberal. Um, there is a moment in when they have their fight, which I want to talk about in the kitchen, and uh, Betty Gilpin's character Crystal is like, I don't want to listen to this Beethoven and blah blah blah, and I was like, I'm pretty sure that's Mozart. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh damn. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so I did, uh, what did you think of the final girl on girl? Um, I mean, you know, they, they stole from, you know, 
other stuff. Pretty I mean, it looks, you know, like the most reminiscent of Kill Bill. Bill. But, you know, we've talked about this before with other movies. If you're going to steal and you make it look good... I'm not going to, like, ding you for, oh, like, you stole, you know. It's fine. I thought it was cool. Like, like there were enough moments, too, where one of the things, that dra- I mean, I love action movies and fighting. And so, obviously, you can't have people in a fight in the movies and get punched in the face. I feel like I'd be on the floor and it <laughs> would be over. Like, so you can't see people, like, suffering these wounds. But there were kind of, like, enough, like, sort of, like, winking moments where it's, like, they're really hurting in this fight. Like, I loved Hillary Swank's line where she's like, no more glass. And she, like, opens the door and shoves her through it instead. Yeah. There were enough, like, bits like that where it's, like, it was, like, creative. You know, it was, was, like, enough of the movie, too, was like that where it's, like, just when you think they're going to just keep painting by numbers and doing like the easiest thing possible or it was like a moment of originality like that and i thought it was like a good like set piece at the end too me too i thought it was very yeah. fun um they again they did keep it pretty loose with the camera which is what i like you know like if you've choreographed a good fight scene don't mess it up with a lot of like fancy camera work um and i did like because it was reminiscent of um so every once in a while, a mouse gets in the apartment, usually when there's construction in my building. And then I'm awoken at like four in the morning of the, <laughs> of the cat tearing through the apartment, and <laughs> like knocking stuff over, like in this knockdown drag out fight with the mouse. But like they, as they're going through their ho- and so what happens, like she won't kill it. She'll catch it and then she'll let it go and like catch it again. Like she just taunts it basically. It's but yeah. it's like I've caught them because I wake up. And I try to, like, get the mouse to run into a bag. But I've caught them where they're just, like, they totally do a timeout. Like, they do in the middle of that fight yeah. scene. <laughs> where the cat's, like, <laughs> like they're it's frozen in really place. Like, like, no one's making a move. Yeah. Like, like the mouse kid. is, like, <sighs> yeah, and like then they, like, funny. start up again. <laughs> like, it's pretty it's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's when that, like, great. happened, I just, I, I, I agree with you. Like, yeah, when she's, like, no glass and she opens the door. Like, I mean, I... Again, aside from the satire part, the whole horror movie action flick part of this, it really doesn't take itself too seriously, which yeah. it should not. It's not that kind of movie. Yeah. So, like, I'm not going to grade it as if this was, like, high art and, like, not no. down. Like, it, it knew what it was doing. It was yeah. Like, and I don't think, like, to the movie's credit, the the parts of dialogue I found to be annoying or, you know, like, kind of eye-rolling. Like, it doesn't seem like anybody was trying. It's not <laughs> like... One of the things that drives me nuts is the show South Park. Because they're just like, oh, everyone's an idiot except us, blah, blah, blah. And, like, this didn't really have, like, a lot... I don't think the people who wrote it or created it... I think they knew they were doing something, like, stupid. It wasn't presented to me as though, like, these, you know, the the uh, you know the conservative characters that they're hunting... I don't think that they were trying to, like, really do anything with that other than just, like, spew opinions these characters would have rather than, like, trying to sound like like they were onto something smart. I don't think yeah. the movie at any point tried to do that. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I So I was circling back. Like, I was doing, like, looking up some stuff. There was an article on Vulture that sort of walked through how this whole controversy got started and, like... Basically, every step away of the way, the, like, writer and director were like, wait, what? What? People are upset? Like, what's happening now? <laughs> like, they just, like, honestly didn't see any of it coming, and you kind of can't blame them, because once you actually see the movie, you're like, what was everybody so... Well, like, you know, the no point are the liberals, like, the good guys in this movie. Right. Like, that's the part I really don't understand. They're through and through bad. Right. And stupid too and you know presented it and you know it's vain you know like that that was those are the moments that made me laugh more she's like the one liberty she's like did you just say guys <laughs> it's just like funny like, yeah. you know it's just like yeah it's like that does kind of irritate me when people say that like serious <laughs> but if anything guys like the, gender neutral yeah yeah like like the like president commented on this movie and yeah. how horrible it was and I was like I feel like if he had watched it he'd been like yeah get these pricks <laughs> like he would have been all about it yeah. eating McDonald's and still, like I don't know yeah it's so, crazy 
It's totally crazy. So I guess what got leaked was, I mean, and it's it, it's just the perfect, what's so hilarious about it is like, it's the perfect, like, if life actually imitates art, the only thing they got freaking right in this movie was apparently so, again, spoiler, and uh, I mean, I don't know how much this would ruin your enjoyment of the movie anyway. Like, again, it doesn't really rest on there being like big reveals no. or twists. Um, so... The reason they target all these people is because these people got caught up in this conspiracy theory about liberals hunting, quote unquote, deplorables. Yeah, it was a joke thread that Hillary Swank and her friends had about hunting people that you kind of like see at the beginning of the movie. And it turns out that that was a joke that gets them all fired (laughs) from their jobs. Right. And they're all like. Well, might as well really do, do it. it. Yeah, <laughs> so like that wasn't a thing that they were doing. And then because it became this huge controversy, then it, they decided to actually do it. Um, as one does. Yeah, set up a murder spree. Um, but then the thing that like apparently was like the flashpoint for Fox News. And then, of course, because that's all he watches. Yeah. The... Um, idiot in chief catching on to this movie and creating all this controversy was they saw some sort it got leaked that they used the word deplorables so like it just it's again it's a perfect life imitates art like so they were like saw the word deplorables and decided to completely you know something i'll bet the studio was happy as hell when that happened you can't buy publicity like that yeah, no, they their like marketing campaign when they re-released it was like the most talked about movie no one's ever seen. Yeah, you know? it's just like so, and it's just like another silly eighty-five minute horror movie that's like kind of clever some of the time and really not a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, as as satire it wasn't clever. And it was and it's mm. and I, I feel like it was such a missed opportunity though. Like I think it could have been really funny if I don't think there's a better version of this movie. I really don't. No? No. Have you seen Citizen Ruth? It's pretty good. (laughs) No, I I haven't seen that one. You haven't? No. Um, um, I'm trying to think. I know what it is. People love Idiocracy, but I hate that movie. I also thought like that movie, though, the reason I think that movie might have worked better than this one is it's... It's like the the plot lends itself to being really stupid. So it's the point of the movie. Whereas with this, it's kind of, I don't know, it's like taking like a more intellectual stance. Whereas like the other movies, it's like in a world where everyone's an idiot and we can just come up with all this dumb stuff. And there's like an idiot from our time who's really smart. It's just easier. I mean, I think so. But I guess, I don't know, like. I also like that movie, though. Hasn't aged all that well. But. I mean, the inherent principle of it is so flawed. Like, the sort of right-wing eugenics underlying theory of the movie is so utterly offensive to of me. Of what, idiocracy? Yeah, like, I can't... That, like, dumb people want breathe. more? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, like... That's true. I never even like, thought of that. The, I, I mean, it's just such a social Darwin, like, poor people are poor for because they're stupid. Like, yeah. they're not. Uh, yeah, and I don't it's, think... Like, like, intelligence isn't inheritable as much as you think it is. However, it is, like, a foregone conclusion in the United States because of our class system. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So, like, just everything about that theory just really makes me angry. Like, yeah, your parents' education almost perfectly predicts your educational outcomes like it's almost 100 percent. yeah it's destiny which is a problem with our the way our society is set up not at all because poor people are dumb right yeah (laughs) this is a great futurama episode where the like i forget why but the main character and his robot friend commit a crime and they're here they're pleading insanity and the the human gets sent to the robot asylum because the the judge ruled being poor a mental illness. <laughs> it's like everyone, you're right. I don't think that like I think that they subconsciously do that in that movie, but like it doesn't make it any better. Like I don't think that. But I don't. I don't. You know. I don't. I'm not gonna go like defend idiocracy to the death. But I don't think that they were trying to be like you're definitely dumb if you're poor. 
I'm I'm not entirely sure based on some of Mike Judge's other stuff. Uh so that's an open question, but I mean I, I guess I feel like I don't know. I mean it's it's it it just it, the timing of this movie just couldn't have been it's to come out now in the middle of this pandemic where like it's you you know everyone's sort of predicting like we're gonna have this big social not everyone some people are predicting that we're gonna have this big like social awakening where we all realize we're in this together and like <laughs> you know don't I, make me laugh <laughs> yeah and I'm like no I like I we're, people are hoarding toilet paper and water and everything else like no sense of we're in this together I got into this argument I'm like look dude. Like, I had to listen to you for so long about everybody being horrible. And now, like, you're going to lecture me about how, like, this is going to make it all good? Like, that's, like it's like I couldn't believe my ears. Yeah. Because like, I'm not, like, all gloom and doom. But it's like, it won't make people come together at all. Like, you know? Like, well, it won't make them come together less either. But, I, you know. I know. Yeah. And it, it's like, it, it was funny. So, a friend of mine who lives in the fancier part of DC was saying that when he was at the grocery store, I think he got something from the deli counter and he thanked the deli worker for, for working there. And he was like, Oh, thank you so much. You're like the first person who said something. And I was like, so then I, you know, I saw that post. I did my weekly shop at the Petworth Safeway, which FYI is in a gentrifying area, but there's, there's still a lot of, you know, ethnic diversity. There's a lot of income diversity still in, in the Petworth neighborhood. So, like, I go to the grocery store and everyone's like, oh, thank you so much for being here today. <laughs> like, I was like, all of us in the, like, poorer neighborhood are, like, really understand we're all in the, you know. Yeah. And I was like, I'm sure the people in your wealthy neighborhood just, like, walked on by and didn't say a thing. No. Like, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess I just, I... It was trying to make a point about, like, the devices, divisiveness in our society. I actually did appreciate that um, the evil liberals were all, for the most part, like, corporate mm -hmm. CEOs and, like, rich people. And I was like, I mean, they kind of, like, they kind of threw, like, some kind of, like, Becky character in, or Karen character in there, the Emma Roberts and her, like yoga outfit and blonde hair and she looks like really rich and she's one of the deplorables like kind of throwing out at like you know uh, my favorite deplorable was the the redneck lady with the red hair did you notice the picture of her when there it just says <laughs> she's at a protest and her sign just says stop being gay <laughs> 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 So funny. Yeah, and for like all their talk in the liberal side, there's only one person of color. And they make him, he's the one they embed yeah, with yeah. the refugees. That, I swear, that was my favorite part of this. I don't think they believed you, Don. And that like kind of makes me wonder like, Don's surprised when he says that. So maybe he either didn't know that was going to happen or he was like, I don't know. It, yeah. It's, I don't know. I, I don't just was like, like I knew, like, I recognize the actor. So I was like, he's a plant. Because I was like, I know that guy. I've seen him in tons of yeah. things. Like, um, but yeah. So it's like they they kind of try to go after like certain types of people, and they and they do in just like a very ham fisted way that just doesn't work at all. Like go after sort of corporate America, um, being oddly like a tool for the liberals, which. Yeah. I think it would have been maybe more believable if you knew, like, what that company did. You know, when they, they dismiss her. That guy, by the way, who did that, I thought he was the most plausible <laughs> actor in the whole movie. And he's been in tons of stuff, too. Like, he's a big, like, you know, you'll that see guy, him on, yeah. like, TV and whatever. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's totally believable that it was, you know, some some larger liberal company you know i mean they didn't seem like they were you like should have made it soul cycle <laughs> yeah right <laughs> something like that or something <laughs> like soul cycle something that's like all about its values and then explains yeah. its workers or whatever although i don't think soul cycle does but 
But, but something like that would it would have been cooler. I mean, it would have had a little bit more bite to it. I guess. Yeah, that's they, what they I mean. Like, that. I don't think you're right. Like, I think they could have made this a lot funnier and sharper on the satire part, with, and it would have worked. Uh, maybe on the like, I don't, I don't know. I think that no matter what, my focus on that was more the 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 dialogue they put in the mouths of the deplorables. I don't I like that. Just, right, it's horrible, and I don't think would have improved you know i just i i think that um the people behind it never would have had a plausible like right leading character <laughs> be created okay so you're saying that they couldn't but well, yeah i think it would have been more fun if they had oh yeah and i but i mean and then it was like again i did appreciate the nod to staten island one of the deplorables was from Staten yeah. Island, and I was like, "I see what you're doing there. Good job." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I just I don't, I don't know. I don't. I mean, yeah, there's a better version of a movie that could be made. I just don't think it would have been made. I mean, I, I yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe not from those people, but I I definitely think like you know, and I've sort of talked about this before. You brought up. Um, Futurama, but like, I mean, The Simpsons has been doing pretty good satire for like a lot of years. Yeah, for like eleven years of its existence. <laughs> now not it's all just... of them, but <laughs> Dude, that um, show was last good when I was very far from graduating high school. Yeah, this is disturbing. To it's think been about. on a very <laughs> long time. But I'm 33 years old. Full disclosure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I do, but I do, I do think you're right. Like, I think you have to, I think you have to know what you're satirizing. And I also think it helps to be more specific. So not to bring Citizen Ruth up again, but it's just such a good example of what they were trying to do in this movie without being a horror film. But it's the movie Citizen's Ruth is a send up of the abortion debate. So it's like very specific to the pro-life community and the pro-choice community. And it just it's like the worst, you know, it satirizes the worst elements of both. And sort of Ruth is kind of caught in between the yeah. two. And she becomes a poster child. But, you know, so it's like it is easier to do, you know, if you try to paint too broad a brush, then you lose the specificity and you lose the humor, you know, and you lose what kind of makes a good satire, I think. So like trying to get all the deplorables in there. Yeah. And I think they were kind of smart in that regard and keeping the body count high and keeping it like the movie moving because you're still sucked in even if it's it's kind of like one of those like sort of like shotgun blast approaches like some of it will stick some of it won't not to mix my metaphors but they they keep it going enough. Yeah, and I I will say like for for our audience surrogate and our quote unquote every man, like I did appreciate the fact that you know the villain of the piece and the hero of the piece were both women. Yep. Um, and the, you could, I mean, I totally identified with uh, Betty Gilpin in that movie. She was great. Didn't like really, doesn't matter. Yeah, no, totally doesn't. Um, of course, I identified with Hilary Swank. She is my top four celebrity lookalike. <laughs> I don't know. She is though. I get I get you look like Hillary Swank a lot. But regardless of that, like I kind of I I actually wanted it to end with them both dying. I wanted them to kill each other. Yeah. I thought that would be the perfect like every side is bad, but I guess by having Betty Gilpin in fact not be a deplorable, that was sort of the point they were trying to make. But yeah. I kind of want to say. So maybe all of us normal people can emerge unscathed from these extremists on both sides unscathed having stolen the wealth of, <laughs> of our corporate overlords i think was um the message of that movie but yeah i mean i think this could be something that that could have really resonated with everything we're going through right now and sort of the debates about the you know who deserves help in this next financial crisis i think there's a lot more awareness than there was last time that bailing out corporations doesn't do anything to, to help anything. workers at all yeah and so i'm glad to see um the fight kind of being led to say okay if we give you this money it comes with strings and the strings are you can't just do what you want 
at all times. Nope. You've got it. That money has got to go into somebody's pockets. But again, like, and I'm not totally against like a certain amount of corporate relief, but I'm just like, why not just send everybody a, you know, who makes below X amount of money a check? Like that would be fine too. Like why even send it through corporations? Yeah. It's, it's, you can't just do whatever you want. I feel like that's, that's what it is. You know, which is what happened last time, right? Yeah. Okay. We bailed out the banks and and that prevented absolutely no one from keeping their house, like, or from losing their house. Yeah. Well, some rich people didn't lose theirs. Well, yeah, ex- <laughs> absolutely. So it, it, I, I'm sort of, I guess I'm just sort of overall disappointed because I thought this was an opportunity to do something. Like, it could have been a fun satire to, to sort of bring us all together. I don't think that the coronavirus is going to do it. it. remains to be seen. No, I didn't think that it will not. Um, but, so on that note... Be dead. Yeah. <laughs> um, giving it a social impact score from 1 to 10. Oh, like 4, 5. It tried to do something, but, like, low. But I guess... No, no. Yeah, I guess I I, I want to give it. Yeah, I was thinking a four or two because I'm like, look, I, we all know I'm not the expert on the horror genre, nor is this trying to be like again some sort of very arty horror. Yeah, I don't no, think it's that, not. Yeah, it wasn't trying for horror. And I definitely wouldn't pay like twenty dollars to stream this, but like if it comes up on cable or on Netflix or Amazon or something you're already subscribed to, I would strongly be like. Oh, you should watch it. It's fun. Yeah, I would say if you have a passing interest in it at all, then rent it. Why not? What else are you going to do? You yeah. know? I would say, like, if you have a passing interest in, like, the horror action side of it, though, and not the satire yeah. side of it. If you think it's going to be a good satire, yeah. save your money. Yeah. So I'm like... It's not. Yeah, but I can't, like, the people I watch it with had, like, a good time. Like, yeah. they were just, they liked it more than they thought they were going to. So, you know, I'm like... It, it actually, like... It's just, I, I guess that's the thing. Like, we do a lot of very serious films on this podcast. Like, it was nice to see something that just didn't take itself yeah, too seriously. Not at all. And knew what it was. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, on that note, recommendations for the week? All right. So, the guy who plays the, like, uh, there's, like, a part where the people are, they're with these refugees in a U.S., citizen who they think is working for the embassy comes to rescue them he ends up being in on it that actor macon blair stars in two great movies blue ruin and green room watch both oh he co-wrote each of them with the director did too. He? i think so i know he wrote the third one they did hold the dark netflix movie don't watch that one that is good but the first two are awesome yeah our- locals too from the dmv R.I.P. Anton uh, Yelchkin. Oh, when he started. Yeah. Um, who's in The Green Room. Which I actually saw. And again, like, none of these horror... You know I can't do super... This is the kind of, like, campy horror that I can handle. Like, none of this stuff is too... Did you watch... You watched Green Room? Oh, yeah. That's why you recognized... You recommended Blue Room to me. I liked Green Room. But that's, that's like... There's a lot of, like... It's, like, super violent. It's <laughs> violent. And I... Real people violent. <laughs> it's, it's like so. I just close my eyes if it gets too gory. Yeah, fine. that's true. Um, but it's not like it's the creepy. It's yeah. like the midsummer that I'm like, nope, yep. nope, nope, cannot handle like, yeah. or like the others where it's like, give me nightmares. Like yeah. I can't handle the like gets inside your like psyche kind of horror because it works. Like I get really afraid. Um, so I am gonna recommend. Blast from the Past. It's got a stellar cast in killing Cameron Diaz and Courtney B. Vance. Uh, it's called The Last Supper. I thought you were recommending the movie Blast from the Past. No. This is like, <laughs> this is some, this is some like, I looked up the, I looked it up because I couldn't remember the name. I was like, I just remember the cast and the plot. Um, some mid-90s. It's a great satire and it's about a group of sort of, young 20s liberal people who decide to invite over a right-wing dinner guest and serve them poisoned wine. (laughs) So they just go on this, like, murder streak. And 
one of the interesting things about the good thing about the movie is like it sort of it sort of explores like what becoming you know like an assassin or a murderer does to like the individual personalities of the people but again if you want like good satire it's pretty biting in terms of again the takedown of the conservative characters and these liberal people who are supposedly liberal and killing people <laughs> so um highly recommend uh and we hope you enjoyed this episode of movies that matter um it it might be our last for a bit uh, uh, we'll take our lives in our hands <laughs> to bring you movies that matter well, I, I mean i wish we could there then like theaters <laughs> yeah, aren't open even, yeah. yeah like it's not even an option also if adam and i just gave you to another coronavirus we're down for the count um so we are going to do our best to keep bringing you content. But if you're home, you know, now's a good time to stream all the movies we've ever done and go back and listen to old episodes. Uh, Dr. Sleep Director's Cut is out for home home purchase. Stay tuned. Uh, we have been accepted as, as panelists. I would, have, I would have sort of started the podcast on this. We've been accepted to do a panel at AwesomeCon here in D.C. Uh, but... I very strongly suspect that that will not be happening. It's where the smart money is. Uh, It's 1.30 p.m. on May 2nd if we go forward. Uh, If we do not, we are putting in a lot of work and prep, and we'll probably give you a special episode. Uh, But, yeah, we'll be fairly... I mean, it's disappointing if we don't get to do it. Um, Hopefully we'll be able to do something next year if that happens. But anyway, so those are sort of the the team movies that matter pod news like we're doing our best to keep going uh through all of this reach out to us we're all bored and lonely Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and remember movies matter and so do you we'll see you next time